Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And now I am back in Toronto. This still counts as vacation, so I got a few more reviews to get through. And you know what, let's keep them all country, so let's get started. So this is an album that's been on my schedule again for months and really it's a sort of indie country act that I would have typically knocked out very quickly if it wasn't for the massive back catalog then I probably would have covered this back in February when it came out or at the very least like March. Sadly they did have a back catalog and it took me a while to get through them and going back to them now I can't exactly say that I was thrilled one way or another to cover them. I don't think Mike and the Moon Pies are bad by any stretch of the words. They are a pretty serviceable, more traditionalist indie country act, but they're also not really great, at least not in my point of view. And going to this album, I kind of feel a lot of the same. And really, it's hard to pin down why. I think that a lot of the melodic construction is indeed good. I think that the production's pretty crisp and clean. The melodies certainly shine through and they are all good players, but I don't know. There's something about the production that feels oddly seedy. It feels a little bit too low key. The tones come across as a little bit too rounded and it just, you keep expecting there to be a little bit more oomph to the actual, some of the songs and they just don't really bring there. And yes, I get that it is partially part of the point Point, but it also, when you follow that up with a frontman who doesn't exactly project a lot of charisma, it leads to a record that, well, is a little bit underwhelming, or at the very least, unassuming. Again, I get it, part of the point, especially so when you look at some of the more performative side of the album, when you take a look at some of the lyrics. But even then, I don't think the lyrics really rise above good. I wouldn't say they're especially great or especially poetic. I don't know guys, like this is one of those projects that I want to like more than I do. It is certainly catchy, but it's not something that is drawing me back nearly as much as I want to. So, ah, I want to be generous here and give this an extremely light 7 out of 10 because I know there is an audience for even more of a sound like this that is a little seedier and chintzier. Hell, normally I'm up that alley if there's a little bit more texture. Shame there really isn't here, but hey, if you're curious, this brand of indie country, it's got its fans. Check it out. Sorry about the wandering hangups, early morning and late night wake ups. It was just me. In case you wonder, you've got dad's old number. You know it's funny. I didn't used to like Cole Swindle at all. I used to think he was one of the worst perpetrators of bro country coming in on the heels of Luke Bryan, and his debut album coming out in 2014 was easily one of the worst examples of the genre. But then You Should Be Here came out in 2016, and I actually kinda liked the album enough that I wanted to start rooting for the guy. The songwriting had taken a measurable clip upwards, and he was tapping into some more emotive material. And one thing that I specifically characterized for that album was that it felt like an ending point for bro country and it felt like it was just laying the groundwork flat he's moving past it and going on to whatever could come next sadly when you follow up with this record you realize that it doesn't seem to have that many ideas of where to take his sound next because this is still very much a cole swindle record in the same vein as you should be here in other words the lyrics have taken a considerable step upwards especially whenever he starts talking about his father or even some of the relationship songs i don't think are half bad in terms of the level of detail and nuance that he flushes out some of the details it's certainly a cut above most of what you would see in modern bro country even modern mainstream country but it doesn't get a Around my issues that I've had with Cole Swindle for years now, specifically when it gets to his production and instrumentation. Somebody needs to fire whoever is mixing the bass lines and the drums on this record because they sound terrible consistently. And Cole Swindle's not the sort of guy who typically brings a lot of character and personality distinctive to his voice anyway. So when you have this record where he is basically passable, but he's not really bringing that much more to the table that'd be all that distinctive or interesting. And when you couple it with 
with some production and one song that's midway through, and you'll know when you hear it, that have trap elements, even going more of a pop direction is somehow even worse for you. Don't do that. Now on the plus side, it's still melodic enough. This guy knows his way around some decent hooks. And I said, when he gets to the more heartfelt material or is at least willing to delve into a little bit more emotional nuance, I think he's not half bad. And the album ends really quite powerfully. But again, the production is so damn frustrating. And while the good songs might outweigh the bad, they don't really elevate this into anything close to deeper quality. So again, I feel like I am inclined to be generous because again, it ends really strongly and there's a couple choice cuts. That's enough to give it a extremely light six out of 10. But again, this is barely passable. And I wish Cole Swindle had taken this album as the opportunity to go off in interesting directions. With this record in particular, it feels confused, a little all over the place. It's almost like where he's going to be searching for that next place, considering how much Luke Bryan is flailing now. And honestly, I'd probably listen to Cole Swindle over Luke Bryan these days, but uh, this was frustrating. Should be better than it is. Like an island rain, it comes in out of nowhere. Might not choose to go there, but it hits you just the same. Close your eyes and see what matters. Wash away your worry and pain. There's holy water and an island rain. So look, I have been incredibly hard on Kenny Chesney the past couple of years I've reviewed him, the past two albums specifically. It's not that I think he's a bad artist. Let me stress this, because he's got some natural charisma, and he's got some decent details that he and his co-writers will bring into some of these songs. The problem is, is that he's got his niche that he has hammered into the ground, and he's put out so much material that, frankly, a lot of it starts to sound the same. And again, when you go into some of the bad overproduction that plagued Cosmic Hallelujah, it just winds up feeling more synthetic than it really should for that sort of island-inspired music. And Honestly, I've wanted to like some of his stuff, but when he gets into more of a social commentary mold, especially as he gets older, it comes across as really cranky and lacking nuance, and I think that's a damn shame because he can do better. And you want to know why I can say he can do better? Because this album is actually probably the best thing he's put out in years. Yeah, I'm not going to say it's great or anything, but if there's a record that actually looks like it's reaching the point where he's close to the spiritual successor to Jimmy Buffett that he's always wanted to be, it's this one. And it's there for two main reasons. The first is a lot of his production. He's leaning into more organic textures this time around, specifically when it comes to a lot of the guitars, it comes to some of the steel drums. Yeah, it's still pretty traditional island inflected stuff, and, and hell, you look sideways, some of it might as well have been pulled from the a lot of the sounds the Zac Brown band were pushing in this direction, but still, it's a good fit for him, especially considering he's doubled down on a nice little production trick that, yes, Dirks Bentley's done a couple times already, but giving the mixes a fair bit more space and embracing more atmospheric tendencies. And the reason why this actually works and doesn't feel incredibly synthetic or like a bit of a gimmick, it's because of the content. And here's the funny thing about me and Jimmy Buffett specifically. I don't care about Jimmy Buffett's sillier songs or the more languid or relaxing songs. No, the kind of summer songs that I like that Jimmy Buffett puts out, more of his beach material, are songs like When a Pirate Looks at 40, which are more naturally melancholic. It allows him to tap into the more, the side of his personality that's a little bit more singer-songwriterly, a little bit more contemplative, a little bit more meditative, taking more stock of the existential emptiness that one might face when they're out alone alone on the ocean. I will not say that Kenny Chesney gets all the way there with this, but he gets close. I appreciate how melancholic and wistful a record like this gets. And Kenny Chesney and his co-writers have that natural gift for tapping into a writing that's got a little bit more detail here in order to paint these scenes. I like the fact that he's doubling down on yeah, it's pretty conventional pirate imagery that would has already been poured over by Jimmy Buffett, but I like how much detail and flair he adds to it with that added bit of melancholy that does come with age. Yeah, songs like Get Along still frustrate me because he's trying to crowbar in social commentary that doesn't really have a lot to it, but at the same time, when he gets a little bit more self-reflective, he turns out some good songs. And one more point to his credit, some of the melody lines are actually a little bit more developed and interesting than you would expect out of this brand of country. Kenny Chesney can hew close to a very specific brand of composition, and the parts where he deviates from it on this album are actually pretty good. So yeah, this is a pretty good album. 
it's very much a summer album and very much for people who like this brand a more melancholic summer material which i will freely admit is not for everybody i think that's pretty much a lot of my specific trends one reason i consider blonde by frank ocean such a summer album is that it plays in similar emotional territory if not sonic territory but at the same time I think this turned out really well. Again, it's the best thing Kenny Chesney's put out probably since the very early beginnings of the decade, and I'd go back to this. So yeah, if you're gonna look for something just to muse when you're walking on the beach, this is seven out of 10. Check it out, it's worth it.